Hi, and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Fertig, and today we are speaking with the Managing Director from iTech Minerals, Mr. Michael Schwartz. The company's ASX ticker code is ITM. Hi, Michael. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jess. It's great to be here and great to talk to your um, readers at Small Caps. Now, uh, Michael, before we get started on some of uh, the more recent news that you've had, I thought for our small caps audience who are not that familiar with the company, could you provide us with just a brief overview um, of the company and also your projects? Sure. So um, I started up iTech Minerals with uh, my two fellow directors back in 2021. We listed on the Australian Stock Exchange towards the end of the year. And we um, inherited the assets from a company called Archer Materials. So they were predominantly uh, graphite assets. And that's what we've been focusing over the last sort of two and a half years since we listed. Um, we, we did um, divest into uh, clay hosted rare earths for, uh, for a while. So we've got uh, that possibility on the Air Peninsula as well. But really, our main focus has been on developing the, the, the graphite assets. Fantastic, Michael. Now, congratulations on the significant um, increase in the Air Peninsula graphite resource, which you've just recently put out. Can you elaborate on the impact um, that this has on the project's potential as a whole? Yeah, thanks. Just look, it, it's really a major achievement for the company. We've been drilling um, for almost, I think, 12 to 14 months on that project. Uh, and when we first started drilling at the, the Lacroma deposit, there was only one or two drill holes into it. So we had no idea what Kind of whether we could actually drill out a resource or whether there would uh, be one there. But after 14 uh, months of drilling and about 140 drill holes, we're very pleased to be able to uh, announce this new uh, mineral resource estimate um, for the Air Peninsula. And it's come out at 35.2 million tonnes at, at 6%. So just to give you an idea of what that means for the company, we started out um, before we started drilling at the Chroma with a, a global mineral resource of eight and a half million tonnes at about 9%. So we've increased our mineral resource by over 300%. Um, so that's a, a really significant increase. So prior to this drilling, we had about a mine life of about 10 years. And with these new resources that we've added at the Chroma, it'll increase that mine life to above 30 years. Uh, so it, it's an, a significant addition to the company's assets. Um, and I'll, I can go a bit more into, um, I guess, some of the reasons about why um, the the asset is uh, a step change for the company and, and some of the, the benefits for it a little bit later, if you'd like. Yeah, fantastic, Michael. Now, the Lacroma deposit, now you've just mentioned a you know, increase to 30-year mine life. Now, the Lacroma yeah. deposit seems like it's highly promising for a, for a low-cost operation. Can you explain for our audience sort of the, the key geological and metallurgical features that contribute to this potential advantage? Sure. So we, we had a number of projects we could have drilled out uh, in this resource drilling campaign. Um, one of them was the, the Sugarloaf project, which has the potential for a really large tonnage. It's got an expiration target of about 160 to 260 million tonnes. So that's a, an enormous potential deposit there at, at a grade of 7 to 12%. So a lot of the shareholders ask, why did we focus on the Chroma and not on, on the Sugarloaf project? And the simple question is we knew the methodology or the ability to process the graphite at the Chroma is very simple and cost effective, where that, that is kind of unproven at, at Sugarloaf. The, the metallurgy is a lot more complicated. And, and I know of a number of other projects, both in Australia and overseas, where they've been able to develop and, and drill out massive resources at high grade, but then they hit a wall when it comes to processing the graphite because the, the metallurgy is complicated. And uh, it basically stalls the project and it can actually... Um, stop a project from advancing. So knowing that the metallurgy at the Chroma is really easy to process and cheap is a major advantage and it really lowers the risk for development. Um, there are also a couple of other factors with the geology that uh, lead us to believe it has the potential for being a really low cost operation. Uh, that is, it outcrops its surface. Uh, so you don't have to move a lot of waste material and have a lot of cost in mining before you get to the stuff that's going to produce money for you. So we're we're mining ore from day one at, at the Chroma. Um, the other thing is that it's a shallowly dipping deposit. So that means you don't have to, um, as you go deeper and deeper, you don't have to move so much waste to the side. You can uh, keep mining ore um, as you go down uh, and have that, that payback uh, consistently. Um, one of the other factors that we really liked about the Chroma is that it's clay hosted. So 
rather than having to mine hard rock, um, we're mining a really soft clay. Uh, so if you ever, if you, anybody that's built a house, I get, the, I like, I think the analogy that I like to use is when you're digging your foundations. If you're digging um, uh, foundations in a in a nice soft clay. Um, the builder doesn't charge you much more. It, um, it's the standard fee. Whereas if you hit rock when you're digging the foundations of your house, all of a sudden those costs blow out and you're paying tens of thousands of dollars more to dig that hard rock. So we don't have that at La Crema. We've got soft rock and it's a, a clay material. So uh, the, the cost of mining is likely to be free dig, uh, low cost, uh, and that it also feeds into the low cost of processing it as well. So it's got all those really nice geological characteristics that make it a low cost, low risk operation. Thanks so much, Michael. And I just love your analogy over there. Um, now, can you explain to our audience why is having a low cost operation so important? So really, it's all about lowering lowering the risk. I mentioned before yeah. the other companies that have got you know, large deposits, high grade, but they they have high risk when it comes to processing this material. Uh, either the, the graphite is too fine, uh, the costs of extraction are too high. Um, so yeah, having having all of these features at Lacroma uh, being low risk is is really important because the the, the risk in development is low. Um, we are in an environment where the graphite price is relatively low. Um, and when we're competing with China, which produces 90% of the world's graphite that goes into lithium ion batteries, we want to make sure that we can compete on a, on a very low price point and entry into market. So having a low cost operation with all these low risks helps us able to, uh, to be able to compete on that level. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. Now you've, you've just mentioned, you know, the graphite price, uh, which has dropped in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, um, but you still seem you know, very confident on developing the air um, peninsula graphite project. What are your sort of long-term views on the, um, you know, the graphite graphite market and prices moving forward? Sure. Yeah. Look, um, look, what I keep pointing back to is that year on year, the adoption of electric vehicles is still going up thirty percent. There's been some reports in the media that's backed off um, recently, but that's in a you know a few countries, I guess, that have um, a little bit of hesitance to take it up on the scale of others. But but globally, it still is increasing significantly. So you know the projected demand of many analysts is that it's going to to skyrocket over the next twenty to thirty years with both um, the the uptake of electric vehicles and energy storage systems. So you know we believe that. Uh, the demand is going to be continued and and sustained, and that's going to feed into uh, an increased graphite price in the in the longer term. Um, I guess China has, in the last couple of years, really uh, developed its capacity to produce cheap synthetic graphite, uh, and we compete as a natural graphite product out of the ground. We compete with that synthetic graphite, and that is is what has depressed prices in the in the short term. So. By developing a low-cost project at Lacroma, we can compete with that Chinese low-cost synthetic graphite on hopefully on price, but more importantly on our really um, uh, well-established ESG credentials. So when you produce synthetic graphite, it uses a lot of electricity uh, mm -hmm. and produces a lot of carbon dioxide. When you mine graphite, it's about three times less than that. So if we're going to sell our graphite into the Western markets, into, say, Europe or America, um, they're a lot more, um, uh, I guess they have a lot more focus on good ESG credentials and, and low um, carbon emissions. So we're going to be a, a preferred supplier for those kind of markets. So that's really where we're establishing ourselves is to feed into those kind of markets. That's so interesting, Michael. Thank you. And, and you're so right. You know, while uh, graphite prices might be depreciated now, the demand supply fundamentals still remain um, and, and the applications that are required for use of that commodity. Now, what are the next steps um, that the company is looking at for, for the air project, the air graphite project? Um, so the, the next critical steps, we, we've um, released some new metallurgy this morning. Uh, it's come out, uh, we've released to the ASX that um, supports our idea that we can really process this graphite quite cheaply. So at the Chroma, we have an unusually high recovery of the amount of graphite that we can uh, we can get out of it. So normally the indus industry standard is to, to try to achieve about uh, an 80% recovery, and we're getting between 93 and 95 um, so that feeds well that uh, if you're mining this material, you want to be able to get all of it out. You know, it's you don't want to leave it in the ground or have it go out to waste. 
So the next step is to continue to develop that metallurgical process. Um, we've done it from one location at the Cromer. We now need to step across the deposit and make sure that, that we consistently can consistently process it across the whole deposit. Um, once we've done that, we would then want to look at um, establishing a pilot plant because really the next major step is to get offtake partners. Um, that, that is where we can start really moving ahead with our, with our feasibility studies if we know that we can sell this product and, and at what price. So once we've, we've done the metallurgy, uh, we can show um, these potential offtake partners that we can produce a high quality product that's suitable for lithium ion batteries and we can produce it for uh, well and consistently for a long amount of time for that 30 year mine life. So uh, it's doing our metallurgy first uh, and then uh, doing constructing a pilot plant so we can produce bulk sample uh, for qualification testing for those offtake partners. That's the, the next major steps. Yeah, that's excellent, Michael. And I'm sure strategics are looking quite closely at what the company is doing and, and, and will be following those met results. Now, along with all of these studies that you have, um, you know, along the way or that, that you're still um, working on, You've also just recently acquired a new project up in the Northern Territory. So you have been quite busy. Can you tell us a little bit more about that project? Sure. So um, with the Lacroma, this well, a major part of the Lacroma project, adding the new resources coming to an end. Most of the work we're doing now is done by consultants, the metallurgical test work and, and studies that I talked about. So our exploration team here in the office, um, rather than sit on their hands, we've uh, sending them back out in the field again after having been out there for 14 months. Um, but this time up to the Northern Territory, where we were very lucky to be able to cheaply acquire some copper gold uh, and potentially lithium projects up there. So I've been up there myself personally. Uh, I'm a geologist by background, so I took the, the the first opportunity I could to get up there and have a look at the rocks and, and was very pleased with what uh, I was able to see up there. So we've got uh, about 60 kilometres of widespread uh, yeah. copper gold um, mineralisation um, at various points across surface um, and also some, some gold only um, shows there as well. So... We took a number of rock chips, um, about 55, uh, and those results should be coming back over the next couple of weeks. But um, yeah, we, we're really looking like there's uh, really good potential for copper and gold. And I mentioned lithium as well. Um, one of the things that was was a bit unexpected was the, the lithium potential. Um, so one of our directors um, had worked on the project before and noted that, that it did have lithium potential. So we took some, some samples for lithium while we were up there as well. That's so interesting, Michael, and that was sort of leading into my next question, which which was, you know, you were recently on the ground at Reynolds Range and you took some samples for lithium, but it was never, the project was never explored for lithium previously. So why did the company do that? Was it because of what you just mentioned before with your director having previously worked on it or... Yeah, what, yeah what, so he, he, he's a he's, yeah he, he's a smart guy he um had, had seen it um the, the potential on, on the ground and we looked around um when he when he mentioned it to see whether um there were any old tin mines in the area because historically most of the new major lithium discoveries have been where there have been old tin mines because tin and lithium go hand in hand uh in these mineral systems that um it's a geological term called pegmatites um they're a rock type that that host the hard rock lithium mineralization and quite often they carry tin as well now the old timers that mine tin didn't even know that lithium really existed back in the old days but they they did know that the, the tin existed and that was something they chased so uh we had a look for any occurrences of tin in the area and found two old tin mines there um, so that was where we went back and started sampling for, for lithium at, at the start and got quite excited with the kind of minerals that, that we saw there. But it was really on, on the basis of this director, um, Gary Ferris, putting all of the, the pieces of the puzzle together um, that indicated that there might be, be lithium in the area. Um, and sure enough, you know, when we went and had a look, we saw some pretty good potential for it. Um, and, and potential over a very large area, that whole 60 kilometres that we visited has pegmatites all the way through it that have the potential to to host lithium. Well, fingers crossed, Michael. It sounds like you, you know, you you've got a lot of different commodities or a portfolio of critical minerals plus gold, which is also in favor at the moment. And um, so not just graphite, but you mentioned copper, prospectivity, lithium, and also gold. So that's very exciting. So, Michael, I have one last question for you. And um just to end off, and which is what would you say are sort of the top three things that investors should know about iTech minerals? Sure. Um, so 
Uh, ITEC Minerals is a company that was founded on the principle that we put most of our money into the ground. So uh, we are explorers uh, and hopefully developers. So uh, the vast majority of the money that we raise from shareholders goes into the ground and is um, put into exploration. So, and we've shown that over the past 12 months by spending about four and a half million dollars uh, in the ground at La Croma drilling out, out that resource. And we intend to keep that philosophy going forward uh, on the Reynolds Range project is to quickly advance looking at the copper and gold and, and uh, lithium assets up there. We were already starting to develop uh, copper and gold projects uh, and drill, drill targets on that Reynolds Range project at the moment. So, you know, any money that we raise will be going straight into, into the ground up there. Um, the other thing is that we've shown over the last 12 to 18 months that we're able to take a project from a concept uh, where we only had two drill holes at La Croma and then quickly drill out a resource uh, and, and bring that as a major asset to the company. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before was that most of the resources we added at La Croma are in the indicated category. So they're um, a high confidence of um, interpretation. So we can use those resources in, in, in studies rather than inferred, which is a lower confidence. So 65% went straight into indicated. So we have the ability as, uh, as a company to quickly convert what we see as an expiration target into a major asset for, um, uh, for, for the shareholders. Um, and, and I guess the third thing is, um, we have um, some very good uh, digital media marketing people that work with us, and I um, like to keep the shareholders informed. So I uh, regularly do video updates to the shareholders, and I like to take the shareholders along for the ride and the journey and feel like they're you know, an integral, integral part of the exploration process. So I would encourage um, anybody that's watching this today to, shine, to, to, to sign up to uh, our uh, YouTube channel and also to our um, email um, distribution list as well. So get onto our website, have a look at that and, and please sign up and let us take you on the journey and, and follow the uh, exciting news that we have coming out both for our graphite projects and also uh, for the copper and gold at Reynolds Range. That's so fantastic, Michael. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's really such a pleasure to have you on the show and look forward to having you back on in the near future to find out some updates. I'm particularly interested in the Reynolds range and what you guys might find up there. So good luck with your exploration programs and also with your MET testing um, at your graphite project. Thanks, Jess. It's a pleasure to speak to you today.